Al Jazeera News Network. Authorities say eight staff members are among 20 people accused of conspiring with a terrorist group. Well, our next guest was one of the people on that list, Sue Turton, a presenter and correspondent with Al Jazeera English, joining us now from Doha. Sue, when did you first learn that you were on this list? Well, we heard rumours about it, Becky, about, I don't know, three or four days ago, possibly, but uh, there were just leaks coming out of the Foreign Ministry and the Prosecutor General's office. So we didn't really have confirmation until uh, late yesterday, and that's when we heard that charges have been put to a number of Al Jazeera staff and the three guys who are still incarcerated in prison in Cairo. They were arrested on the 29th of December. Forty days now they've been in prison, and the charges against them, as well as us, that they're, the Egyptians either set up some sort of terrorist network or the foreigners came in and aided and abetted that terrorist network. These, as you suggest, are charges relating to terrorism and spreading of false news. What was the nature of your reporting in Egypt when you were there? I actually turned up in Egypt last year on, in the beginning of September, September the 1st, and I went to cover the Arab League meeting. I don't know if you remember, there was a huge meeting of foreign ministers from the Arab League who were talking about Syria and whether the US was going to take action against Syria at the time. And at that point, we were, we were managing to cover all aspects of, of news in Egypt. So I then went on to do all sorts of stories from pollution in Cairo to TV satire uh, to, you know, protests and angles of, of every sign of... of of Egyptian politics. Um, coming out really in early November, the last time that I was there was on the 5th of November, well before uh, the Egyptian authorities uh, named the terrorist, uh, the Muslim Brotherhood rather, a terrorist organization. That was on the 25th of December. So how the, quite they're relating that I was aided in abetting a terrorist organization when the last time I was in country, it wasn't a terrorist organization. Uh, are you of the mind that this is a uh... This is uh, part of a wider crackdown on journalists uh, across the country reporting. You know what, just a couple of days ago, dozens more foreign correspondents were arrested and beaten up by the security uh, services. Uh, we understand the US has turned around and said this is a part of a, a wider crackdown of, of intimidation on the media. And that's what we're hearing for journalists who are still trying to operate in Egypt. But for sure, that's what we think was happening when our guys were arrested in December. Uh, the authorities really want to silence anybody that is not towing the government line. All the domestic media and press in Egypt toes the government line, the military-backed government, and doesn't disagree with what they say. But it's only the foreign press that are still trying to put every angle, give everybody a voice that wants to have a voice in Egypt. And that's why they are trying to shut us up and why they're trying to shut up all other foreign journalists. Listen, um, the last we saw, not heard, but saw of a couple of the journalists who uh, you alluded to earlier on from Al Jazeera who have been detained now for, what, some nearly 50 days, uh, was a couple of days ago when, oddly, it has to be said, Al Tahrir, one of the Egyptian TV stations, actually ran some 21 minutes worth of footage from the authorities as they arrested these two guys and took them away from their hotel room, pointing out in this video uh, equipment, which quite frankly you and I, and I, and I hope our viewers will understand, certainly looked to me as if uh, it was just the average standard uh, uh, equipment that we use in, in news gathering, microphones and hard drives and, uh, and cameras. Listen, you're closer to the story than, than certainly I am and, uh, and our viewers will be. What do you know of these guys at present and what's your sense of what happens next? Well, we were extremely worried for them for the, the weeks following their detention because we were being told that the, at least Mohamed Fahmi, who is Canadian-Egyptian, and Bahar Mohamed, who is Egyptian, they were being kept in solitary confinement in cells in the Scorpion Unit prison, which is the most maximum security prison in Egypt and has horrendous conditions. We were hearing Peter Grester was in Tora prison. The conditions slightly better, but even so, concerns for all three of them uh, that they were not really being allowed access by their lawyers, proper 
access uh, and by anybody, a, a sort of human rights watch or, or beyond amnesty. Um, we know that Mohammed Fahmy had a dislocated shoulder and really could do with seeing a doctor to treat him medically. But we did hear a couple of days ago that they've now been put together in the same cell. Uh, we understand conditions are slightly better for the guys that were in Scorpions, although Peter Gresser has had to sort of go down a level, if you like, but at least they're together. And our biggest fear was that the, really that their morale would have been really, really dented because they've been, mm. it's weeks and weeks now that they've been in these dreadful, shocking conditions. And we know, you know, their blankets were taken away at some point and it's very cold. They were sleeping on a stone floor, but at least they're together. And we're hoping that means their morale is kept high. And all we can do is try and keep really the media campaign to keep them in the spotlight, to keep people talking. And we're incredibly grateful to all of the media, all the journalists around the world who got involved a couple of days ago, even your Christiane Amanpour on CNN holding up a, a free AJ staff, lots of people standing up all over the world putting a tape across their mouths and saying, free the Al Jazeera staff, we won't be gagged. Yeah, and we've been uh, running that shot as uh, you and I have been talking to, uh, talking to each other and remind our viewers that Mohammed actually uh, used to be uh, a member of the staff here at CNN working as a producer for us on the ground in Cairo. Sue, always a pleasure. Thank you for that. Well, the UN called it a serious threat to women's...